Hey friends, it's been a, a couple of days or possibly a week or possibly more since my last poetry submission into the social media universe and I apologize for the delay. Tonight I'm making up for lost time. I'm reading a very excellent poem called When They Tell Me by Pamela Wright. The cool thing about this poem is that Pamela Wright is deaf and this poem was published in a book called Introduction to American Deaf Culture. Um, so I just thought I'd share it with you. I am, of course, not deaf. And I feel like there is a little bit of an irony of reading a deaf poem on social media in a way in which deaf people might not actually be able to hear and experience the poem. I'm going to try to see if I can't figure out closed captioning. Uh, I also just wanted to note that, generally speaking, I may continue to read poetry by people who are in some way, shape, or form fundamentally different than me, an average American straight white male. Uh, when I do read those poems, I hope that it's taken in the spirit of I'm sharing these works in an effort to elevate voices that you may not have encountered before, and I'm completely aware that my audience right now is relatively small. It's, it's just my friends. So I'm in no way trying to appropriate or profit off of the words of people who are already marginalized to begin with. My sincerest hope is that if you hear this poetry and you think, hey, that sounds awesome, you might want to look more into these writers and perhaps buy copies of their books, check out their work, and continue to promote voices that you don't necessarily hear every day. And all of this is coming from a voice that you do hear necessarily every day. So I'll work out the irony of all of this in my head. But in the meantime, tonight I am elevating the voice of Pamela Wright. This is When They Tell Me. When they tell me that my thoughts cannot possibly be powerful, because my voice cannot create beauty, I feel angry. But I'm not allowed anger, for to be angry is to be defiant. When they tell me that to be good I must be obedient, taciturn, never cause trouble, to comply gratefully in the face of insults and humiliation, I feel rage. But I am not allowed rage, for to feel rage is to be a radical. When they tell me I should ashamedly shun the fluency that flows from my hands and erase the grotesque emotions and information from my face, I feel revulsion. But I am not allowed revulsion, for to fear revulsion, excuse me, for to feel revulsion is to be a disgrace. When they tell me I should pretend to happily conform and find satisfaction from a part-time life on the fringe, I feel despair. But I am not allowed despair, for to feel despair is to be unappreciative. When they tell me that my life of silence has no value, no significance, and no sense, for easing the way for those too young to know, I feel hate. But I am not allowed hate, for to feel hate is to be a militant. When they tell me I don't realize how deprived I am, how isolated and behind, and that my people cannot ever succeed without someone holding their hand, I feel aghast. But I am not allowed aghast, for to feel aghast is to refuse to assimilate. When they tell me I cannot be tenacious, I must accept coercion. I cannot be opinionated, I must accept debasement. I cannot be intense, I must accept degradation. I cannot be confident, I must accept abuse. I cannot aspire, I must accept inferiority. I am not allowed resentment, I'd be a troublemaker. I am not allowed fury, I'd be a rebel. I'm not allowed horror, I'd be abnormal. I'm not allowed frustration, I'd be insane. And if I dare, I'd be deceased. How dare I? Oh, do I dare? I do dare, and I can. But I'm not allowed strength, for I'm not allowed to be human. Wow, see, I, I find this poem especially powerful because I think it actually both really lends a megaphone to the deaf experience, but it also is so transferable to really anyone of minority status in this country. I feel like this, these words could apply to a ton of different people's shared and lived experiences, and I'm extremely grateful to Pamela Wright for allowing me this window into her experience. And if I can, I'm going to keep trying to elevate these kinds of poems, and send this out into the social media universe in the hopes, as I said before, that you will find more artists like this and maybe be compelled to hear and listen to them more. So if my average American white male voice can be the Trojan horse for that sort of thing, hopefully I'll have done my part. Anyway, thanks for listening.
Good night, social media.